Here I'm going to show you how to use Corsair's IQ link system to transform your case that ends up looking something like this. The important part of this video is basically to explore the wiring logic, showing you how to connect everything up logically and simply chaining it all together in a very straightforward way to make your life really easy. I'm using a 240mm IQ link Titan cooler for this, but any size of the Titans will work just fine, or any IQ link cooler, and obviously I'm using three front intake fans in the form of a triple pack of RX120 Max RGB fans, but you can use any of the IQ Link fans for this or any of the IQ Link coolers. I just want to explore how it works. Combining the triple pack that you can see here with a single RX120 RGB expansion kit, we can then make sure that we've got exhaust fan at the rear of the case as well. But I'm going to show you how to connect all these up quite simply and then explore what that looks like in the case so that you can see the connections in there, the wiring of it and how it's set up a little bit into IQ and more. Now I've done separate full in-depth and much longer guides on IQ Link that I'll link to in the description, but this is a quick explainer on how to do this in a really easy way, including how to set it up so that the RGB goes across the fans in sequence in a logical way in IQ, because once you get into IQ, you can use the system there to reposition the fans in the software so that they easily match up and sync nicely. At a basic level, of course, there's IQ Link fans are really easy to set up. There's connectors on either end of the fan, and you'll see little arrows to let you know the direction of airflow through the fan so you know which way around to install them to make sure they're intake or exhaust fans. But you'll notice that we have connectors on either side, as well as another port that's helping to secure the fans together, which is important. So in terms of the airflow, the front of the fan pulls the air through and then it blows back through the other side. So bear that in mind for the airflow. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. You then have these connectors. So you'll see we've got two that are like notched on either side with a pattern on them and then another two are the actual connectors that send the signal and data between the fans so you can put those in to the ports like this and then push the two fans together and you'd use that logic to obviously connect your groups of fans so that you can then install them into the case. I'm not going to show how you'd screw them into the case, that's not the purpose of this video. Instead, I want to show you how to connect them to the controller and to each other. So the controller comes with both the triple pack of fans and with the cooler, so you should have two of these. You'll notice that it has ports on the bottom, these are very important, and also two of the IQ Link ports on either side. You can connect 12 devices per port, so 12 on the left, 12 on the right. Bear that in mind because we're going to get to that in a minute. But also, you have these three important connections. One is PCIe power, goes to your power supply unit. One is the USB connection to your motherboard. And then the other one goes to CPU fan or AIO header. We'll get to that as well. Now, with the fans on the radiator, you'll see we have an IQ link connector on both ends one on either end of the fans. This helps with the circuit of fans because we're looking to create a circuit of cables and links between them to connect them all up. The pump also has a connector on it and a USB port, but you only need that if you've got a display, so you won't need it in this setup as I've got it set up here. If you've got a display on the pump, that's slightly different. And with the basic logic of setting up a Titan, what you would do is you would plug one cable into one end of the fans. As you can see here, this is a long cable that you'd then run back to the back of the case and plug in to the controller. Then you take another cable and you run that and you connect it up to the pump. The idea here is that then both things are connected because there's no connection currently between the fans on the radiator and the pump itself and you need to make sure the pump's connected up as well. So we plug this other cable into the pump once it's installed in your system and then the other end of it plugs into the controller. Now that's obviously the basic logic of how you'd connect up the cooler but this doesn't account for extra fans in the case. If we want to use that single controller for this we can take one of the small cables that comes with the triple pack, run it from the end of the fans on the radiator and connect that up to the single rear exhaust fan. So now the connection is going from the controller to the two fans on the radiator to the exhaust fan at the back. If we then want to put three front fans into that case, what we'd then do is we'd add a cable between the radiator fans and the front fans to the top of it, and then a cable from the bottom of that connects up to the controller. So now the connection goes from the controller to the three front fans, to the top fans on the radiator, to that rear exhaust fan, and then a separate connection to the pump to the controller. Pretty straightforward, 
outside the case, but let's now see it inside the build. So hopefully it makes full sense to you and the logic of setting it up. So first of all, installing your fans, make sure you've got the cables connected. I'd actually recommend plugging the cables in before you put your fans in there, at least into the fans, because you might find, depending on the case, it's a little bit fiddly to get your hand in there and then plug them in afterwards. Now the controller comes with sticky tape so that you can mount it to the case. On Corsair cases, there's a nice spot for this, but you should find a position easily in most cases to be able to seat this somewhere because it obviously can just be stuck down in place. So I've now got my three intake fans on the front with a long cable running to the left hand side of the controller here. I then want to set up the cooler in the case. Now what I'm doing here is putting that little fan cable on the end of the fan on the radiator ready to connect to that rear exhaust fan before I put it in because otherwise it's going to be really fiddly in that gap in the top left as you can see here. So when we go about that process, obviously also plugging in that rear exhaust fan from those top radiator fans might be a little bit fiddly as well, as you can see. So this is why I mentioned it's worth plugging those in beforehand. And then obviously at this point, we can install the pump down. Now, obviously this is the Titan. You might have a slightly different cooler. It's worth noting that some of the other IQ link coolers connect to the radiator rather than the pump, but we do need a cable coming out of the pump on the Titan, which I'll get to in a second. From the other end of the fans and the radiator, we're using a smallish cable to run from those fans to the front fans. All of these cables came with the triple pack and with the cooler, so it is really easy to set up like this, but you can see the gap for plugging these in is pretty small. It'd be even worse if you had a 360 millimeter cooler, so it'd be quite tight. Obviously, you also need to plug the pump in in this case, plug the cable into it, then run that through to the rear. Again, this is going to be very fiddly depending on the case, so sometimes it makes sense to plug these cables into the fans or into the devices before you install the parts. Run the cable back through to the rear and then plug it into the other side of the controller. And that's the wiring set up. Hopefully that's really clear now. But the important part is that you make sure you plug these bits in as well. So this is a PCIe power connector. That's a power cable coming from your power supply unit that then plugs into that black extension cable. It's the same connection you'd use for your GPU normally. It's a six pin connector. You do need to make sure that's plugged in, otherwise things won't be powered properly. You then also have a USB connection, micro USB plugs into the controller, and then the other end of that connection plugs into the bottom middle of your motherboard. So you're usually looking for this little port marked USB, and you should find you've got at least two of those, and you can plug this cable into there, and then that'll allow you to control it via IQ. You also have this additional small little cable, which plugs into the right hand side. Now this can either be plugged into the AIO pump header or the CPU fan header. I'd recommend CPU fan because it often means the BIOS doesn't complain about things, but AIO pump is logical as well. Then you'll see that the fans are now set up and working nicely. Once the PC is finished in the build, you can then get into Windows and download Corsair's IQ software. At this stage, you'll probably find you get a notification that you need to update the firmware and the controller, and I'd highly recommend it because then it will make sure everything's working nicely. This is especially important if you have more than seven devices plugged into either side of the port because traditionally the controller would only work with seven on either side. Now it works with 12 with that firmware update. So if you see any of the lighting on your fans not working, that could be why. So just update your firmware and that should sort it out. Now in this section here, you'll then be able to use the wizard to basically work out where your fans are. When you click on them, they'll change color in the case so you can see the position of them in the real world versus what's in the software. You can then just basically grab and reposition the fans according to how you want your lighting sequence set up in a logical way so that the lighting will then run from one fan to the next. Under the lighting, I'd highly recommend using Lighting Link because that'll make sure all the fans and maybe your Corsair RAM and other things will all change to match each other. You can see here that the RAM and the fans and the pump are all going through the various lighting sequences and then you end up with a really nice looking case. So this has hopefully been a very straightforward guide into how to set up IQ Link and how to wire it logically. As I said, I've got more detailed ones I'll link to in the description and I'm going to do a full install guide for the Titan as well. It goes into more depth. But I just wanted to cover the basics and explore the logic of this. It will work for 360 millimeter coolers as well. As long as you only have 12 devices on one side, it should be fine. So if you're running from port to port to port and connecting a circuit is very straightforward. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. 
You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.